There's history here. And here. There's history there. History is everywhere. Welcome to the Southern Oregon History Show. Our show features historical museums and societies from throughout Jackson County. I'm Amy Drake, Exhibition Curator at the Southern Oregon Historical Society and your host for today's show. With me is Helen Walgamont from the Eagle Point Museum and Sherry Lawson from the Guardians of the Eagle Point Museum. Thank you for being on the show and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it sounds like we have two people here from different institutions, the Eagle Point Museum and then the guardians of the Eagle Point Museum, but that you represent different things. What's going on here? Well, first, I, um, the Eagle Point Museum is, I think we're one of the only ones in Jackson County of the museums that is owned by the city of Eagle Point. They own the land, the building, and everything in the museum and I'm here to represent the city of Eagle Point at Eagle Point Museum. Okay, and then the Guardians. And the Guardians were formed to help maintain the museum and help the city do other projects that they're not able to do. And we do that from fundraising and we have been um, given nonprofit status. Okay. So we can apply for grants mm -hmm. and um, just to help the museum out. Okay, so again, two different entities, city and nonprofit yes. support, essentially. Mm -hmm. When was the Guardians formed? Uh, we formed in 2012. Mm -hmm. Helen actually was spearheading that because the Historical first. Society disbanded. She wanted to uh, get another one up and running, and so she was our first president. And uh, we got nonprofit status in 2013. And got a JCC grant to um, create a website and so we have a website now. Oh. We'll, we'll come back to that a little okay. bit. I want to talk more about the history of the Eagle Point Museum first. So when was the museum founded? Uh, we opened our doors in 1978 Okay. and the idea was presented to the city in about 1978, 1975 and the community thought that was a good idea, so they uh, pro helped promote that. The school district, we started our museum with the one-room schoolhouse, and uh, it was called the Long Mountain Schoolhouse, and they moved it over to the school in 1947 and used it as a classroom, and then it became a storage um, facility for him, and the group from Eagle Point decided that they wanted to have a building to put their old stuff. <laughs> so uh, the school, so uh, the fellow, the people that owned the land, Eddie Dehack, donated the land and they moved the schoolhouse from the school to the present on the, over there by the Butte Creek Mill. And the, his, it's noted for, as the historical district. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, the people got together and we opened our doors in 1978. So we've been the second uh, museum in Jackson County other than the Southern Oregon Historical Society. Mm -hmm. But we didn't start getting any funding from the group until 1987 when they wanted to bring the covered bridge to Eagle Point, the mm -hmm. Antelope Bridge, for walkway and Winnegar that was the head of that group, he decided well, there well, must be some funding. So they went mm -hmm. to Southern Oregon Historical Society and and then we just supported ourselves with baked food sales and yard sales and mm -hmm. and when Gay mm -hmm. Nail Cranbill wrote a history book and she used the proceeds and donated all the proceeds to the Eagle Point okay. Museum. That time it was the society. And um and then in, 90, I think, 87, they decided we needed a new roof on the old schoolhouse. And, mm -hmm. and that's, so we said, well, we don't have the money. So that's when we asked the, 
to get our fundings, and that's how we begin to. To I mean, be clear, that funding came from the county. County, because right. there was it a was heritage the county, district. Because it was a heritage district, mm -hmm. and they used that money to to help put the roof on. And from then on, okay. then we hired a creator, and mm -hmm. we developed our museum. Okay. Do you have anything to add to the, the history of the museum? Uh, Helen knows uh, the exact date that the two editions were put on. I think she mentioned, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so the Eagle Point Museum obviously r represents the history of Eagle Point. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the history of the town? The town was, um, well it was named Eagle Point, they say in uh, 1853. They saw some eagles that nested on the on the bluff above, and somebody mm -hmm. said, "Well, show, what what should we call this?" And they said, "Well, there are eagles mm -hmm. is nesting up on that point, so why don't we call it Eagle Point?" That's the story, you know. There's probably <laughs> other ones out there, but that's patriotic. the story we get. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then uh, we became a city, and it was incorporated in 1911. Mm -hmm. Why the Time gap. What? It, well, it was a community until then, and then they got the city that was became big okay. enough that they inside to corporate. As you know, a lot of little cities around the area, Phoenix mm -hmm. and Talent, they did incorporate it in near the same time. Okay. So that's when they incorporated. Mm -hmm. Just like White City, they're not incorporated, but they're still White City. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so. What drew people to Eagle Point? Like I know your family has a long history in Eagle Point. What, um, what drew you there? My family came to this area in 1853 mm -hmm. and they homesteaded up at Roxanne. But my mother and, and their family didn't move to Eagle Point until 1908. But my dad's family um, came in around the 1900s and they okay. ran a livery stable downtown, a business. Mm -hmm. And first it was a freight uh, freighting uh, business, and then they, they decided to do the livery stable. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how we, it, with the connection to Eagle Point. Mm -hmm. My family has always been involved in Eagle Point. My my father was on the school board. My brother was on the school board. My husband was on the school board. <laughs> mm -hmm. My husband was a teacher, so I'm really connected to mm -hmm. to Eagle Point. Yeah, it sounds like a really strong bond. And in the museum, I have a lot of artifacts that pertain, you know, when they started it, that's what they wanted to do is take some of So people could understand what our pioneers struggled for our freedom what we have today, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I always have to add the veterans in there because if it wasn't for them, <laughs> mm -hmm. we wouldn't even be here. So yeah. they're very important to me. Mm -hmm. So speaking of the objects in the museum and just the, the stories that they tell. I'm gonna give this question to Sherry just to switch it up a little bit. But um, do you have a favorite piece at the museum? <laughs> I do. I like that Eureka stove, that portable stove. Can you describe it, the stove? Yes, yeah. it was built in 1934, I Googled it. Mm -hmm. It has little burners on the outside uh -huh. and then when you push them up and latch them, then it heats up the oven that's on the inside. Huh. It's adorable. You could use it <laughs> in these days. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they stopped making them, but mm -hmm. it is my favorite piece. Oh. Can you think of a piece that represents, that like particularly represents Eagle Point's history? Oh my. I'd have to really think about that. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, I see the John Matthews picture on the wall. And Who's John Matthews? He was that? one of the original pioneers, and he was the one that did name Eagle Point. Okay. And I see that every time I turn in the corner. Mm -hmm. He has this kind of scowling feature to him. And we have <laughs> that uh, concrete um, thing as you walk up the door, his name and mm -hmm. uh, his features outlined in copper, I think it is. Okay. A monument. Mm -hmm. Okay. Helen, do you have a favorite piece? Well, I think everybody goes in there and has a favorite piece. Mm -hmm. So what is your favorite piece? My, my, probably my favorite piece is uh, the story of Ollie Boatman. We have a doll there that represents her. She was a 
in 1851, she was captured by the Indians. They massacred her family. And um, she lived with the Indians for a number of years and, um, in the Yuma, Arizona area. And when they found her, um, there was Oatmans that lived here in Phoenix, Oregon. And so when they were returned uh, to the area, the Oatmans went and picked them up and brought them to Phoenix, Oregon. And they lived with my ancestors for a year and taught, taught her to read, write, and sew. And this mm -hmm. lady that the other last year donated a doll that was made especially, and they, just, they tattooed her, the Indians did, to make sure that, that, that branding her, that, that they were their, her, their property. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's quite a story, and it, it, and it belonged to this whole area of, uh, and to me, that's kind of my, uh, there's other things, and they're, they're all mm -hmm. favorites, but mm -hmm. that one kind of stands out to me, the well, history behind that. Mm -hmm. Well, you're wearing a shirt that represents the Eagle Point Museum. Can you stand up and <laughs> show us the shirt and talk about it? Just turn around. I don't know what's on the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry, can you talk about the back of Helen's shirt? Yes. Uh, it has a wonderful yeah. eagle in the middle. It has our covered bridge, the <laughs> Antelope Covered Bridge, the Butte Creek Mill, the Harnish Wayside, which is a fairly new park, and the Avenue of the Flags, of which Helen is very instrumental in keeping going. Thank you. Yeah, that's, <laughs> is that t-shirt available? to buy at the museum or um, is it special? When it was a society, we ordered these t-shirts, but mm -hmm. we haven't ordered any new ones. We still have about eight or nine still mm -hmm. in there that are for sale. And they're like this. We just uh, thought it would be nice to be able to share and wear t-shirts that showed the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are the for sale. points of Eagle Point. Okay. So it's a part of the institution's history, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. Um, so the Eagle Point Museum has gone through a number of transitions. Yes. You keep you mentioned the society and now the Eagle Point Museum is run by the city and there are the guardians to do fundraising. Mm -hmm. um, I, to talk more about the city. Okay. Um, so when did the city take ownership? Just what year? Um, it was about 1908. I mean 208. <laughs> 208. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and here it is. What changes occurred when the city took ownership? Um, we were we able to pay somebody to sit there longer hours. So, so you we have were, paid staff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's really good. Sherry great. and Julie and, and you and, and Marcy. Marcy. And Marcy. Mm -hmm. well, they work, when I work every other week and they, when I'm off, each of them take turns sitting at the museum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was there when they opened in 1978, so I've been there for like 37 years. Time. So yes, we went through a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and did your hours increase? How? It yeah, we were, uh, before uh, the city took over, we only were there on a Saturdays from 11 till three. And since they took over, we're there on the summer hours from 10 to five. Mm -hmm. In the wintertime, we're there from 11 to four. But multiple days of the week right. now, right? Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm. and Sunday. Oh, wow. Before that, we were only just open on Saturdays. Okay, so because we again. just to get volunteers and so mm -hmm. so again, lots of changes. Yeah, mm -hmm. ups and downs. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like any it organization. Exactly, it sure. happens to all of us. Mm -hmm. um, so we talked about the objects in your collection. Where do they come from? Besides from Helen, you mentioned you donated <laughs> some of them, but where, where else do they come from? Local families donate mm -hmm. objects that their families have brought over on the Oregon Trail or from the East mm -hmm. and their collections. And one gentleman brought, oh, his wife passed away. There's a wonderful purse collection. There's China collections. He didn't know what to do with all these wonderful things his wife had. And, he thought if he donated them, he could come back and visit them, and his children do come back Aww. and look at their mother's things. That's sweet. It is sweet. We, we have one item there that is kind of is special that what people do. This one lady has a family Bible, 
and mm -hmm. it was after their parents died, it was passed around and nobody knew where it was. Mm -hmm. So she said mm -hmm. when she got the Bible in her hand, she was going to donate it to the Eagle Point Museum. That way everybody <laughs> and the family knew where it was. Mm -hmm. and when they wanted to look into it, they knew where to go. Mm -hmm. Because when it was passed around from cousin to cousin, Nobody need knew where it was. So those are the kind of things we. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a safe, right, a safe spot right. mm -hmm. for family history. Mm -hmm. That's really lovely. Um, let's see. What knowledge will people gain about Eagle Point when visiting the museum? Mm, it's an incredible amount of history that they can come in and glean, especially if Helen's there because she's been there all her life. But we have so many pictures and we're trying to do a complete timeline mm -hmm. and uh, that'll be a big project, but <laughs> <laughs> just, oh my gosh, it's overwhelming. Tell us more about this timeline. Well, it sounds like a really fascinating it project. It is, I mean, right now we have different subjects gathered in different places, you know, military schools, Indian artifacts, baskets, and um, eventually, hopefully with the Guardian's help and the cities, uh, we want to have an extension built on, and then we would be able to have a timeline, mm -hmm. you know, in history. And of course, we will have to move some things around, but then it'll open up the doors for more articles, because we've had so many people want to donate more, and there's just not enough room. You're full? <laughs> one, I would say. One of the plans, <laughs> what they want to do eventually is like walking through time. Mm -hmm. So, because we have the next generation coming up, right. so that mm -hmm. when we, if we add the extension, you could add, you know, the next generation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as it is now. So when you go in the door, you can see the old, and then you can walk. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that that's kind of the long-term aim. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. I think it would be really neat. It would to do that. And the objects that you have now would support this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we could add some of the children's groups, FFA, mm -hmm. um, Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. There's a number of supportive um, groups in town that mm -hmm. have helped out a lot. Okay. We could focus on them. It's their future too, and it's their history also. Okay. So at the beginning of, of the conversation, um, you mentioned that the guardians had received a grant to build a website. Mm -hmm. So you guys have a website now? Yes, we do. That's so exciting. It is, it really is. What's and on the website? Well, right now there's a picture of the museum and then there's different links to go to that involve the city and different historical societies in the area. And we've gotten a lot of hits already. It was mm -hmm. just amazing. Um, and uh, we want to be able to focus on different parts of the museum so if somebody can't come to the museum physically, they can go on and see what we have there mm -hmm. and showcase the different attributes of the museum. Okay. And this is the first grant that the yes. guardians have received. Yes, it is. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so it sounds like with the website you're expanding, you have plans to build this extension someday in the future. It sounds like, sounds like there's a lot of growth at the museum, despite all the changes in the past, but a lot mm -hmm. of growth today. Mm -hmm. um, where do you see the museum in the future? Bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Drawing in more people to mm -hmm. see Eagle Point's history. Mm -hmm. Eagle Point is growing and um, we want to draw more people in and s show them Eagle Point. Well, I, you know, for the future generation, so mm -hmm. you've got the next generation coming up because I'm quite at the last end, <laughs> but um, so mm -hmm. you know you can you can see that and get no you get the current like we have the old phones but now we could get in the more of the electronic part of it right. you know so that'd be fun that'd it be would. really fun to see yeah, yeah. it would wait so Helen you've been there since 1978 Sherry how long have you been with the Eagle Point Museum. Um, I'd say 2009. Okay. What inspired you to get involved? Well, actually, Helen needed somebody else to help. <laughs> <laughs> um, Helen, Helen inspired you. Um, well, 
when we first started um, adding uh, people, uh, we had a, a gentleman that served with me and he, we, we worked there. And when he quit, they brought people from the Harnish Information Center mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. over to, to work the days that I was off every other week. Mm -hmm. So this is how they got involved. Okay. And I think it was about 210. Was it? Mm -hmm. So you just mentioned the Harnish Visitor Center. Is there a connection between the Eagle Point Museum and the Visitor Center? Well, that's a connection. <laughs> um, I volunteer down there mm -hmm. on, the, on certain days of the month, and they're open f seven days a week now, four days with paid employees and, f and three days with volunteers from the community. Okay. And they are only open from, from 10 to f 4. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then the paid employees are from there Thursday, Friday, and Saturday okay. from 10 to 6, isn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. And is the Harnish Visitor Center also owned by the city? It is. So the city owns the right. Visitor Center right. and the museum. My folks donated the land yeah, years ago. Is that the livery stable you mentioned earlier? Mm -hmm. And so the, that's why the building is built like a barn. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. it all comes together. Um, Speaking of the city owning the properties, how has the growth of Eagle Point changed the role of the museum? Or even just played a role? Has it played a role in the museum? A lot of people come there and say, well, I just moved here. I, you know, they just want to find out what mm -hmm. the history is and, and they, that's how they, they want to get a little more acquainted with where right. they're going to live or where they're moving to. Mm -hmm. And they just want to find a little bit more about the weather schools, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hunting and fishing, sports. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's grown quite a bit. Okay. It's like 200 when I was a kid and now it's about 10,000. Objects? Or? No, uh, the population. The population. population. Eagle Point. Okay, mm -hmm. got mm -hmm. it. So that makes it, you know, it expands in Eagle Point too, so. Okay. Um, do you have any events you'd like to talk about quickly? Well, the Guardians, uh, the last two years in June, put on two fundraising events, historical mm -hmm. tours. The first year we focused on the brown houses that are across the street. Mm -hmm. That Oh, they're just beautiful. We had over 90 people tour through, and that was a good fundraiser. And Bob Russell of the Butte Creek Mill mm -hmm. opened his private collection at the top of the mill mm -hmm. for people to see, and they really enjoyed it. And then this last... June we did another history tour of down Main Street showing uh -huh. the older buildings and the first state bank which is closed but has been sold at auction the new owner opened it up for us for that day so people could go in oh, wow. and imagine what it was like back in the day mm -hmm. and we had 30 people come to that tour okay. and music and ice cream and How fun yeah and we're already planning next year's event mm -hmm. One of the events that, um, that we have was called the Vintage Fair, which mm -hmm. has really developed into quite a thing. And the, when it was the, in the Eagle Point Society, Historical Society, we started that in, in about 205. Oh. And we, it was our idea, and we asked Bob. He had just bought the Bob Russell that owns the Newkirk Mill, and he was going to have an event, and so we just combined mm -hmm. them. And then when the city took over, then they couldn't participate because of public funds. Oh, and so mm -hmm. this is where the Guardian, they can participate, mm -hmm. but, but the city with public funds cannot, uh, you know. Right, because you need insurance for so, the people that are participating, and we have insurance so, so for So that's that. what makes the... Okay. So that's why the guardians complicated do, do things, but do distinct. things the city can't. Well, you know, public people uh, can't do. So mm -hmm. yeah, it makes it makes it work out great. I think. Okay, it does. Do you any um, any other events that you do? Well, we just started last year having uh, Christmas at the museum. Oh. Because Bob puts on a wonderful Christmas event at his mill. He has caroling and. So we thought we'd tie in, and we had a little bit of a spillover, and we had it all decorated with nostalgic-looking Christmas decorations, and it was a lot of fun, and people really enjoyed it. So we're gonna continue that this year. Oh, it sounds like a great event. It was fun. We have time for one last question. Helen and Sherry, 
What is special about the Eagle Point Museum? Well, we started it for me. It was, you know, to tell the history of our area for future generations. We do have uh, mm -hmm. children tours that come through and we try to explain to them that if it weren't for these pioneers, they wouldn't have the the cell phones, you know, and the, the rail cars and the transportation. Mm -hmm. And so I said, you've got to be very, very grateful for your ancestors because you wouldn't mm -hmm. be, and for our veterans, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they played a big part in this. I have to agree. We have a lot of fun with the kids that come in. They ask the most interesting questions. Mm -hmm. It's a great place. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, that's about it for today. Um, I'd like to thank today's guests, Helen Walgamont and Sherry Lawson. And I'd like to invite all of you to stop by the Eagle Point Museum and enjoy Southern Oregon's rich history and see some, some truly amazing objects. Southern Oregon Historical Society's Downtown Medford Research Library is open Tuesday to Fridays, noon to 4 p.m., and on fourth Saturdays from noon to 2 p.m. Also, we have many amazing events out at Hanley Farm. Visit both of our websites for updated event information. The Southern Oregon History Show is sponsored by the Southern Oregon Historical Society and by Jackson County Library Services. Thanks to our sponsors, our volunteer crew, and to RVTV. Join us next time for another episode of the Southern Oregon History Show. Thank you.